Hello everyone, welcome to the IEEE Communication Society podcast episode number 21. This is a bit different uh, format than what we usually have with our guests over. This is Professor Arin Koshik, your uh, host of uh, the podcast series that we have with Comsoc. And uh, today, basically, just want to sh- I just want to share some uh, you know quick uh, ideas and updates about 6G and beyond uh, systems and networks. So as we see in the sort of IMT 2030 framework, the 6G framework that we have, that we have three enhanced capabilities in addition to what we have had for our triangular framework of IMT 2020, which we called as as 5G very dearly, right? So in 6G, we have the additions of uh, integrated sensing and communication, integration of AI and communication, and then ubiquitous connectivity, right? So basically, you want to have this multifunctionality by doing unification or integration of two different operations, let's say sensing and communication combined together, right? And then you also want to utilize, let's say, AI, you know, machine learning algorithms for your comm systems and networks and so on, and basically also utilizing communication fundamentals and principles for your, uh, you know, AI as well, your AI system. So basically, you know, let's say in the case of over-the-air computation or or something similar. And then you also want to have the integration of your, uh, you know, non-trustier network-based connectivity, so anything related to your flying platforms and your, uh, you know, drones and, you know, basically hot air balloons and so on, and also taking indirect access to your smartphone from your satellite and basically integrate, you know, uh, with with your ground network, with your trustier network that we got. So that is basically the three additions that we have. So to touch upon that, I mean, very briefly. um, So first is ISAC. So what we have been working around is, is making ISAC quite energy efficient, right? So what you want to do is already quite efficient in a way because you're trying to save on the you know spectral resources you're utilizing the same frequencies and at the same time you're utilizing the same hardware as well for this dual function signaling right but can we make it a bit more efficient yes we can how is the less if you implement some sort of hybrid beamforming approach so you have your digital beamforming your conventional you know basement uh, beamforming that you got and you have some you know this network of phase shifters you put this uh, basically uh, analog beamforming and then you have perhaps an an additional layer, if you're talking about tri-hybrid beamforming, the new concept, you also have, let's say, a layer of meta surfaces, you know, holographic beamformers or your your RIS or or whatever that we where we have from the you know meta surface side, the meta material side. Um, so what we do is that at the same time keeping this, what we achieve is we have lesser number of radio frequency chains compared to you know um, what we were using in you know conventionally that you had the same number of RF chains as the as the number of antennas. But here you use lesser number of RF chains than compared to how many antennas you got. That is one. Then you also, you know, implement some sort of switching network, let's say on your baseband side, that decides how many of these RF chains should be active or inactive, right? It depends on what kind of algorithm you will use. In our papers, if you look, uh, we utilize, you know, fraction programming approaches. We do good optimization with energy efficiency. We try to, you know, do some approximation to change them to, you know, a difference-based optimization to make them easier to solve. The idea is whatever algorithm or whatever methods that you're trying to use, you you plug in some sort of switching framework that, you know, uh, you know, based on switch off or on, your RF chain and your quantization units are on or off, right, depending on that. So here you can basically, you know, for example... If you're using 64 antennas at the transmitter, and conventionally you have to use 64 RF chains, but in such a scenario of, of you know hybrid beam forming, perhaps you use 30 RF chains, 20 RF chains, 25 RF chains. But by using the algorithm that I'm talking about, you know the the optimization algorithms and optimization methods, you basically want to even lower down the the number of RF chains and the number of quantization units that you're using. So maybe you you might end up with five RF chains, four or three RF chains, keeping in mind that you have the same uh, you know, uh, maybe you know, similar uh, spectral efficiency performance, similar to your con- conventional case, kind of approximating that uh, optimal performance. At the same time, you have very good energy efficiency performance as well, perhaps the best energy efficiency performance, right? And at the same time, you need to maintain some sort of trade-off as well. So, let's say if you are having a good communication performance, right? So, let's say if your energy efficiency, being a communication performance metric, is very high, right? But as soon as you start introducing some sensing bit to it, so you allocate some sensing 
I mean, some resources to your sensing side, your performance starts to degrade. Compared to when, let's say, you're checking the performance performance metric for your sensing side, when, you know, you have, let's say, probability of detection or, you know, false alarm probability, or you got, let's say, some sort of uh, peak to average power ratio or, or even a beam pattern, right? So what happens is that the ideal beam pattern case, for example, you are very close to that when you have higher weightage to your sensing side. You're almost overlapping that ideal case. Compared to when you have communication being in dominance, you will have a performance bit far away from that ideal case. So we always need to remember is that there is always a trade-off, this tunability factor to play with when it comes to sensing and comms, um, basically the joint design that we're talking about. So there's always a trade-off. Sometimes, you know, when you give more weightage, more resources to sensing side, that performance gets better than the other one, right? So that is what we need to remember. Then you can also come up with some, you know, uh, some nice advantageous techniques where let's say you play around with the interoperation interference that you have. So you introduce some interference from sensing to communication and from communication to sensing side. And that is also something, how would you minimize that uh, interference while keeping the spectral efficiency efficiency, you know, maximize. So that is also one piece of research uh, that can be followed that we have been also working around in our group. Um, and then you can also explore, uh, you know, the interference, not just from the, you know, from the, the, you know, operations to each other, like sensing to comms and comms to sensing, but you can also have, you know, multi-user scenarios where you can consider some multiple access frameworks, let's say rate splitting multiple access, or let's say holographic beam forming combined with index modulation or some other new multiple access frameworks frameworks that you can come up with or you know your usual non-orthogonal multiple access framework too I mean there are some advancements there too so you can utilize all these multiple access frameworks combined with this ISAC signaling for a multi-user perhaps multi-car scenario too and you know going forward you can also utilize some more intelligent approaches let's say you know uh, coming from electromagnetic signal information theory you know basically you combine your electromagnetic uh, wave theory you know with information theory and signal processing so let's say in layman terms uh, if, if you want to know uh, briefly so let's say if you're utilizing some physics equations or some Maxwell equations they're quite difficult to solve so you throw in some sort of information theory tools you use some probabilistic models some uh, you know uh, some some sort of approximations to your Maxwell equations basically to make them more consistent so your electromagnetically inconsistent models you want to make them more consistent and at the same time you want to enhance the performance by using some sort of optimization or some sort of compressed sensing tools right so you use signal processing there to basically increase the performance gains so you combine EM theory, your information theory, and signal processing all together. And that leads to all these new, you know, plethora of designs, you know, antenna designs that you got, you know, low uh, complexity designs, you know, hybrid tri-hybrid hybrid beam forming designs your you know um, let's say your your you know your stacked meta surfaces or let's in holographic cases you got this continuous large aperture as well or some spherical spherical wave modeling that is also one part of it so you can lead you know many different variants of meta surfaces and new antenna designs and so on so all of this will fall, fall under this one umbrella term right at the same time as i was talking about isaac right so you can combine esit and isaac together too so basically you know when you have a large matter surface you want to pick up just few of these unit cells out of this large surface so basically and you also want to transmit you know your dual function signal that you want to reflect and transmit at the same time that you can do which carries on both sensing and communication information right so you can have this amalgamation of ESIT and ISAC together too you can expand even further so you can utilize let's say some sort of non trusted network based connectivity so let's say you know you want to get direct access from a satellite so basically Basically, that one is, is not just a communication signal, it can be a joint, a dual function sensing and communication signal, right? So let's say in a case of you know, disaster management scenarios, public safety, search and rescue operations, right? So basically where you require you know, this emergency response to provide. So you get direct connectivity from your satellite or from your drones, flying platforms and so on. And you know, this signal is basically also able to perform some detection, some environmental monitoring, some motion tracking or, or some sort of, um, you know, you can also use it for robotics perhaps, you know, utilizing for automated guided vehicles and so on. And keeping in mind that you have a very high accuracy sensing, by the way, it is a very important point. I can't 
emphasize it, it, it you know, is less than that, is because you have, um, you have to have the centimeter level accuracy. So whether you're utilizing for in this massively connected scenarios, you know, you want to have good localization, good positioning, you know, or, or any different application you're utilizing, you have to have high accuracy sensing. That is quite an important point. And then you, you take this connectivity from your, from your satellites, from your drones and so on. You basically are able to perform both sensing and communication. And then let's say if you're dealing with high frequency scenarios, you know, you can also utilize these meta surfaces or these new antenna designs from ESIT framework. So basically you kind of uh, keep reflecting the signal. You want to reduce these sort of latencies. And basically you want to also, you know, um, reach the, the end user, which may not have very uh, sort of strong line of side path when you're kind of dealing with all these, uh, you know, multi-user and kind of very massively connected scenarios and so on. And you can enhance the performance of your non trustian networks utilizing AI and machine learning methods. Let's say if you want to do some intelligent resource allocation, resource optimization and so on, and you can utilize, you know, basically your deep reinforcement learning methods or quantum DRL or, you know, federated learning methods, quantum federated learning, whatever you want to utilize basically to, you know, enhance the energy efficiency overall for all these operations because remember we have very high payload at the at the satellite specifically already so you want to cut down uh, you know to, to that that sort of cost inefficiency that we are facing uh, in, in current technologies and so on at the same time you want to reduce the latency as well that is happening through you know this direct access connectivity from a satellite or from a drone and, and so on from HAPS or whatever that you're going to utilize right so the point of of this sort of uh, presentation that I'm you know talking about is basically to to utilize all these different technologies from the 6G framework that we are talking about, reaching towards you know sustainable solutions, reaching towards more um, you know cost-efficient solutions, and also at the same time, basically keeping the capacity performance to as high as possible as well. That comes with your new your ESIT framework, and that comes through your how would you intelligently transmit your your, your data? How would you utilize, let's say, some different approaches, maybe of index modulation to come up with some you know uh, intelligent diversity exploration of your, of your antennas, of your frequencies, and so on. So the idea is that uh, when we talk about 6G infrastructure, it is basically going to be a combination, amalgamation of all these technologies together, keeping in mind that we have a lot of challenges to face. Less in case of ISAC, you have privacy, security, you know, a few of the biggest concerns, you know, uh, let's say if you're dealing with vehicle or networking scenarios, you know, you have your vehicle passing through, you know, your driverless cars or, you know, your, your, your you know, autonomous, you know, driving application you got right so in those scenarios you know the car basically needs to sense need to monitor the whole environment around it where are the you know pedestrians where are the traffic lights where can be less uh, another meta surface unit on a, on, a, on a roof of a building or something right so it needs to sense but that area it may be passing through might be um, you know a sensitive area so it can't really be sensing everything around it so or in the case of non trustian networks when you have the satellite which has the you know coverage a wider coverage basically over different different areas, different regions, right? So basically you can't really be sensing everything in those two different regions because they may have different compliance or regulatory considerations to think about, right? So in those scenarios, again, you can't really be sensing everything around you. Or less in indoor scenarios, you got, let's say, a camera that you want to, you know, I don't know, sense like activity of your, of, of your pet or your cat or, or whatever that is. And you don't want to uh, detect some activities from a human inside the space when you're using your camera as a sensor so you need to filter out some information right so that is also one very important point that you need to think at the same time again how would you you know handle the data how would you process this data because of the joint operation this multifunctionality that you got how would you make it cost efficient how would you design the you know waveform for this this core design that i'm talking about of sensing and comms that is also another challenge you know related to isac and how would you do the channel modeling very important point also in standards we, we are talking about this is how would you model this channel how would you do this joint uh, channel modeling for this you know operation of sensing and comms so because they have different electromagnetic properties right so you need to think about that too right so all these challenges we actually need to think right for non trusting networks maybe how would you harmonize the spectrum are you going to utilize the same uh, frequencies that you use on the ground or different frequencies adjacent frequencies or how would you reduce the payload how would you make your AI algorithms more efficient and basically you know how would you reduce the latency or dopamine 
Doppler shift or any of these you know aspects that we need to think we need to combine these technologies but keeping in mind that we have all these challenges to think about that we have to overcome you know with the with the way forward that we are we are talking about Right. So this is something that I wanted to touch upon on, on this particular podcast. Again, you know, uh, feel free to to contact me if you have any you know questions, any discussions you would like to have. Let's say uh, based on you know what we are trying to utilize for six G and how we are progressing forward. Right. Uh, so this will be you know good to to have discussions on this because we are trying to you know uh, formalize on what kind of technologies will actually go into the six G infrastructure. And as a community together, it's a good thing that we have consensus on the objective. It is a good thing that we have basically, uh, you know, uh, are also progressing in parallel with the with the standards, with the pre-standards and standards activities. They are actually reflecting these uh, objectives that we have for the 6G framework, right? So this is something that you know is very important. We are actually following through uh, all these updates and so on. So with this, uh, thank you so much for for listening, uh, and also again we are you know very much welcoming uh, to, to all this collaboration that uh, we may have together, and any queries, any discussions you would like to have again uh, i can give some links to my uh, website and you know you know how you can approach me some email and so on so you can always uh, you know feel free to reach out to me as well so with this thank you so much for listening and hope to see you in the next podcast for uh, you know uh, you know with our you know esteemed guests and our friends and so on in the community and it is always a good series and we are aiming for a you know, lot more uh, episodes uh, later on so uh, thank you so much for being with us and we will see you in the next podcast thank you